together, we can't come together separate, but we've got to come together as one. Amen. Uh, let me tell you, God is good. Yes. Yes. Now, in the book of Ruth, before I, I, I get into it, I went to the Bible and I consulted some characters in the Bible on this unity issue, and this is what I was able to come up with. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, the subject, the, the scriptures that we read from, I saw Ruth and her mother-in-law. If you know the story of Ruth, then you would know that she was a Moabite. She wasn't even a, a, a woman from the children of God. Naomi and her husband and two sons went to the land of Moab because there was a famine in her homeland. While in Moab, Naomi's two sons married two Moabite women. That's why we need to teach these children because our children marry anybody from any culture. Not that we're not one. But if, if your children are in the Christian faith, they better stay in the Christian faith. These two young girls joined the family of Naomi and not only joined them, but joined in serving their God. These girls were used to serving idol gods. So I would imagine it would have been difficult for them to serve a God that they could not see, but had to believe in what they were told by their in-laws and their husbands. Now, Naomi's husbands and sons, husband and sons were killed in battle. I want y'all to read this story now so you can see. Naomi was left with her two daughter, daughters-in-law and no man to care for them. In those days, if a woman didn't have a man or a son to care for them, they had to fend for themselves. Girls, we fended for ourselves today. <laughs> We're back in those times. You sit right there, and you think these children you have today are going to turn around and come back and take care of you. You got another thought coming. <laughs> these children are all for themselves. I don't care how you train them. They're for themselves. I mean, in the Bible days, a woman didn't really mean a whole lot. It was those boys and the men that they had. And every time you would find a widow woman in the Bible, some man, God would put it on some man's heart to come by and take care of them. You let your husband die. You better get up and get you a job. Because these men don't have you on their mind. And as I said, these young boys, they have their own agenda. They don't think about you going to come. Mother's Day come, mama ain't got nothing. Birthday come, mama I still ain't got nothing. You better learn to lean on the Lord. Naomi decides that she will go back home where there was male relatives that would care for her since she is now up in age. Naomi goes to her daughters-in-law and she says to them, you need to go back home to your family and go back to your gods. Now Orpha decided that the best thing for her was to go back home. But she just didn't walk off. She kissed the mother-in-law and she went back home. Now let's look at Ruth. Ruth came from a different denomination than Naomi. Let's talk about denomination for a while. Yeah. yeah. We stuck on denomination. Yeah. 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 You know, y'all Baptists talk about us and Methodists for years. <laughs> Be scared to get baptized. Be scared to go under the water. Yeah, we goats. But let me tell you one thing. There's no Baptist section in heaven. And there's no Methodist section in heaven. And then we all talk about the Pentecostal holiness. Yeah, we talk about they make too much noise. They're banging on the drums. We got drums now too? Yeah, you see how God will change that thing. We need to get up off this denomination of mass. God didn't make Adam a Baptist. And he didn't make him a Methodist. He didn't make him Episcopalian. And he didn't make him Pentecostal holiness. He made him a man. A man to serve him from his heart. We need to get up and get rid of all this denomination and remember that we are coming as one. Amen. Now, after Ruth told Naomi to a Ruth going home, you need to go back home. But Ruth apparently fell in love with Naomi's God. Because Ruth didn't go home. 
Ruth said to her, that I'm going to stay with you. Ruth said to Naomi, here. Now listen, here's where unity is going to come in. Ruth says to Naomi, I'll go where you go. I will be your people and I'll serve your God. And all these things she said to Naomi, not only unity was displayed, but commitment, love, strength was displayed in her saying she wasn't going home. Now let's talk about the daughters-in-law and the mothers-in-law. We don't want to talk about that. But yeah, Ruth is a prime example of how a daughter-in-law should be to her mother-in-law. Now, I was at my line this morning, finger frozen, putting clothes on the line. And the Lord gave me this. For you daughter-in-laws, daughter when you marry into a family, go ahead now. you go in with them. Yeah. See, you've got some daughter-in-laws today. They marry in the family, and they're going to tell the son what to do, and the mother and the daddy, and everybody else. It don't work that way. It don't work that way now, girl. Listen. If you want to marry a man, you better like his mom. I ain't right. never, and that's, that's not good right. grammar. Ray, 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 Randy, I ain't never until this day seen so many young women want to get married and want to boss the whole class. Go ahead, now. They come in, they'll take land, they'll take money, and they'll do everything. But if you are a child of God, you wouldn't act unseemly. And then mother-in-laws, that goes for you too. That girl didn't marry you. She married her son. And listen, mothers, when your daughters get married, don't tell them how to run their house. Amen. See, that's the biggest thing that will break up a marriage today. Yeah, this is a women's conference and y'all need to hear. Don't run your children's house. Men, teach your sons. Teach them how to be a man. Don't, and if they marry a bossy woman, teach them how to train her. They need a man. Yeah. We got some bossy women around here today. Yeah, they're bossy. They want to tell these husbands when to sit down, when to get up, don't bring your shoe in the house. My Lord! I had a pastor, Reverend Hume, used to say, my Lord! When are we going to ever learn that God placed us here together to live as one, not to live against each other? Now when she said, your people will be my people, commitment walked in. Right. When she said, I will lodge where you lodge, love and strength walked in. I would imagine that Ruth and Naomi may have had some problems, but Ruth was humble and obedient to change her ways. That's our problem. Some of us don't want to change. Amen. We want to be a dog in the street and come into church and run the missionary board and still be a dog. We want to cuss all night Saturday night. And we want to come on the choir and we'll shout all over the place. Remember that song said, if we have to reach way down? We need to let Jesus pick us up. Because some of us are living double lives. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that a double-minded man is what? Instilled in all his ways. Now women, you were made special by God. We weren't just thrown together. God made us and he made us special. Amen. Let's stay special. Jesus. Not only did Ruth go home with Naomi, but she worked in the fields on a daily basis to care for her. Because of her faithfulness to the Lord, God gave her the opportunity to be in the line that Jesus Christ came through. Ruth was the mother of Obed. Now let me tell you something. You see how God can use whomever he wished to use? Hallelujah. We'll sit down. I remember when the Lord called me to preach. I didn't want to preach. I, don't, I never want to preach. I tried to bargain with the Lord. I told him I'll do everything else but preach. But I don't have a choice. This is what he's called me to do. And I must do what the Lord says. Now, when we come to the Lord, We've got to come reverencing him. Yes. We can't come to the Lord the way we talk to man. Because God is not like man. No, now let's talk about Sister Esther for just a little bit. She was the niece of Mordecai. Mm -hmm. And after they were taken captive, Esther through her beauty became queen 
and was able to provide for her people. Now, you know, the Lord blessed some of us, not me. The Lord blessed some of y'all, y'all some nice looking women. But listen here, that thing doesn't go into your head. <laughs> yes, it does. Some of y'all walking around, and you got hair hanging down to here. And yeah, we you baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's ours, but because we buy it. It's ours, we buy it. And then we go and we get our nails done. And the Lord bless us today. We can go get two or three outfits every now and then. And then we'll come to the church and we'll come in late. Because we want somebody to see that hat that I got. And then we want somebody to see our outfit. And then we can't sit down. In the church. We might laugh, but it's the truth. And we ain't gonna pay about a dollar. Yes. I love to talk about giving. Because I'm gonna give God what's his. That's the only reason I'm blessed today, because I give God Boy, back what he gives me. Yes. I heard a story one time about money talking. And the $100 bill and the $50 bill, I mean, they were just bragging. Oh, I've been to Paris. I've been to Rome. I've been to Europe. I've been all over the world. And then it got down to the $20 bill, and he was talking about how he's been to New York, and what, I've been to the White House, and Washington, D.C. And it got down to the $10 bill, and, and he started talking about, this, you know, um, you know, I go to, to Bell's department store, and I go to Kato's, and all of these things. And it got down to the dollar bill. All right. And the dollar bill said, so I don't know nothing about that, because the only place I go is to the church. <laughs> That's the only place I go to the church. Now, we need to stop treating that dollar bill like that. We need to bring that hundred dollars that's been to Rome right here to the church. God has blessed us. Yes. We, as Elsie sang the song, we are better than blessed. Yes. But we don't show God how much we love him because we hold back on God. Yes. Now, even though Queen Esther was a beautiful woman, she didn't forget where she came from and she didn't forget her people. Right. She found out that her people was in danger. She sent word to her uncle Mordecai and she told him to get the people together and go on a fast for three days. Yes. And here's where unity is coming in. She said, now I want you to get all of our people together. Yes. And I want you to fast and I want you to pray for three long days. Right, and while you are fasting and you are praying, even though I'm in the castle, I'm going to get my men's together. And we're going to fast and we're going to pray. Let me tell you, prayer moves God's heart. Fasting and praying can change the church. But we don't do that anymore. That's why we fat. We're not overweight. We fat. Because we eat more than we pray. We don't ever push away from the table. I can call y'all fat because I'm fat right along with y'all. But when we get to the point that we start putting God first. And we start eating less physical food. And we start eating more of this work. I'm telling you, our children will come home. Our wayward husbands will come home. These wives that are straddling the fence, they'll come home. But we give more time on physical food than we do spiritual food. We need to learn to push away from the table. And I'm here to tell you, if you push away from the table, God will bless because he promised that he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. Now Esther united herself with the people and got them saved. Esther rose to fame and fortune, but she did not forget where she came from or who helped her to get there. With some of us, when God blesses us, we turn our backs on our family and our friends. And let me tell you, none of us have to walk the church anymore unless you just live right around the corner. God bless us, we all have a car. And if we don't have a car, we've got somebody that can pick us up. But let me tell you, now that God has made it so easy for us, we don't come to church as much. People find every excuse on Sunday morning, especially women. They got to run in their holes or their nail. I got a bad hair day. Oh, my, my outfit just don't look well. 
We find every excuse not to come and praise the Lord. But women, I'm here to tell you God's going to hold every one of you accountable. Because let me tell you, you are the mothers. And if you don't set the example, our children are going to fail. Yeah. And our children are failing us today. Yeah. I look at these children walking around, and I don't blame them, I blame the parents. Yeah. These little girls walking around with their dress to their hip. Yeah. All that little cleavage hanging out. Yeah. And you know the bad thing about it is, I'm a village child. I don't know about you, but I'm a village child. Everybody in the community raised me. Yeah. And every time I did something wrong, then women would tear me up and sent me home and I was too scared to tell because daddy would whip me again. But we don't do that anymore. Oh no, our children run the house. Little Johnny come home and little Johnny said, the teacher did so and so. I'm gonna put on my jacket and my hat and I'm going to the school. And when I get there, I'm gonna cuss the teacher out right in front of little Johnny. And then when little, little, little Johnny go back tomorrow, little Johnny won't cuss the teacher out too. And where did he see it? You. Our little girls don't know how to burn water. Whose fault is that? Yours. And then they want a husband. I don't want nobody can cook. If I was a man, I want me somebody who could take care of me. Some of these young girls can't even wash their own clothes. But they be Christian women. Oh, I don't want my daughter to have to come up the way I came up. Well, what happened to you? Did you die? You still here. God bless you. Your parents made you do these things. And we are, we are who we are today. Now, my mom and daddy didn't have no more than a third and a fifth grade education. But let me tell you, they didn't know more than those teachers at the school of Mama and daddy taught me at home. But you know, today, we don't teach our children. When our little children are little, when we were little, they would teach you your Our Father's Prayer. But before that, they would teach you, now I lay me down to sleep. These children don't know that. But you turn on 50 Cent or Beyonce. They got everything. Every move, they got that. And then you know what we as women do? We laugh. We say it's cute. Y'all, that's not cute. We need to bring our children up in the admonition of the Lord. We need to train our children at home. Don't let anybody tell you you have a no man of child. Because let me tell you something. If you beat them at home, they won't have to get a beating in the street. Oh, let me tell you now. If we beat them at home, they'll call the law. We have more parents coming in now for beating their children. On my job. And you know when the officers ask me, dismiss that thing. Dismiss that case. This boy gonna go to school or this girl gonna go to school. And now some parents get excessive. Now I do understand that. Now some people do go overboard. But when you get to the point, your child standing in your face, women now, women because you're home, and telling you when to get on and when to get off, then you need to go to school and let them run the house. We cannot bring the church together until we get our house in order. Carry the games at home. And then you spread it abroad. You go to the middle school, and Lord have mercy. The little babies are having babies. And what's so sad is before some of these children graduate from high school, if they make it, their children are going to be in school with them. Mothers, we've got a job to do. We come to these conferences and, and we hear the word of God. We come in one way and we go out the same way. But we need to take in some of these things because let me tell you something. These children that we're talking about right now is our future generation. Can you imagine what's going to happen when these children today come into authority? They don't have man of God on their side. But I'm here to tell you God is still in control. I don't care how weak they might seem, God is not going to let his children suffer. God is going to stand by our side day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. God's going to take care of us. Now where there is unity, there's strength. Remember, I want to talk about another lady nobody likes to talk about, Sister Rahab. Yeah, Rahab was a prostitute. Nobody wanted to be bothered with her. But when, when Caleb sinned with Joshua, sent the two spies yes. to check out the land that God had promised them. Now I want you to know this now. When God delivered his children from Egypt, 
There were hundreds that came out. But only two was living at this time. Joshua and Caleb. Let me tell you, God's going to keep a remnant so that his children will always learn. When Joshua sent the two spies in, they went to Rahab's house. Because let me tell you, the, the prostitute house is frequent with men. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and listen, what did the king does? The king did is sent word to Rahab. You know why? That's the more likely place for the people to go. But listen to what Rahab did. A woman that was scorned by her own people. But God found favor in Rahab. Hallelujah. You better stop judging each other. You better stop putting women down. Because the same one you think that God can't do is the same one God's going to elevate. God's going to bring up a new nation. God will Yes, he is. Yes, God will. Now, when, when the two spies went to Rahab's house, they didn't go there for business. They went there for a refuge. And Rahab hid them. And when she hid them, when the soldiers came looking for them, Rahab said, no, they must have gone into the mountains. And let me tell you, Rahab said to these two men, listen here, I heard, I heard about your God. I heard how your God fought for you.
Because the only thing the world is going to bring is evil spirits and troubles. We need to learn to go to the Lord. We need to ask the, the Lord to give us all that we need to help us to get where he wants us to be. God has blessed us now where we have elevated ourselves. A, a, a person told me not long ago, and, and, and the Lord is just dealing with me, that God is about to elevate me. He's going to exalt me. And I feel it in my spirit. I feel it all over me. That God is getting ready to do a new thing in me. And I'm ready for him to do that new thing. I'm not going to sit down on the Lord and tell him no. Stop saying no. Because let me tell you, the more you say no, the further back you push the blessing. When the Lord gives you an opportunity, and, and this is for Sister Ruthina. I've never seen her sit down on the Lord. She was sick, but she was steady going. She was having problems, but you would never know. We sit down every time we get a headache. I can't go today. But let me tell you one thing. I'm going to go while I can. Because when the day come, I can go. I'm not going to worry about it. And when that day come, and I must die. I'm going to just be able to sleep with the Lord. You don't die no better than you live. So ladies, let me tell you something. You better get your house in order. And you better do it right now. Don't wait until tomorrow. Now, I don't want to be no movie star. And I don't want to make no CDs. But all I want to do is sing a song for the Lord. I don't want to be T.D. Jakes. And I don't want to be Joyce Myers. I don't want to be Joel Osteen. And I don't want to preach like Reverend Davis. I just want to be able to tell you that the wages is a sin and death. And the gift of God is to come And we want to keep it all in the house. 
And listen, we've got missionaries in the church. Jesus. And them girls can dress so pretty in their white. Ah, but let me tell you, you got Sister Jones right down the street that haven't seen somebody in two months. Go ahead now. Go ahead. You got missionaries that come in here every Sunday or whatever Sunday they perform. And that's what they do, they perform. And haven't visited one sick in a year. But still yet they're on their way going home to the Lord. Why can't this North region combine their efforts together? And if Sister Giles is sick, we shouldn't have to say, I went last time. Because you've got enough sisters committed to the Lord that will go out and do outreach. But in order for our church to come together, we've got to first come together. Go ahead, man. Sisters, you need to turn your plate down some more. Sisters, you need to get yourself together. You need to tell the Lord, do a work in me. You need to ask the Lord to change me. Where I'm wrong, Lord, fix it. Go ahead now. We need to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, if I'm straddling the fence over here, clean me up. We need to say, Lord, if my dress is too high, help me to bring it down. Lord, if my children not doing right, Lord, help me to pray. And then when you pray and you ask your sisters to pray, or oh, when women get together. Oh, yes. When praying women get together, God will move. But you see, we come together not for the assembling for the good. But Paul said in Corinthians, you come together for the bad, and I believe it. We need to stop coming to church because it's a duty, and it's a tradition. Right. I'm coming down now. But I want you to understand this one thing. That no matter wherever you are, God placed you there. Yes. And I want you to understand this thing. No matter how high you get, God is still holding you up there. Don't let anybody put you anywhere. But you let God elevate you. We've been through some things. And we're going to go through some things. I've had some hard times in my life. I've done some things that God wasn't pleased with. You heard me say, done. I'm not doing it anymore. But we need to learn to turn from our wicked ways. Or if we would just turn from our ways. And learn how to pray. And most of all, we need to tell the Lord, thank you. For all that he's done. You might not know the Lord, but tell him thank you anyhow. He woke you up early this morning. Close in your right mind. The only music you live. And you know what day this is. Your eyes can see. Women, we need to come together. And we need to tell the Lord, put us where we need to be. Now don't be the boss. Don't try to take over. But you stay in your place. Yeah. And there's a place for all of us. Yeah. God has a place for all of us. And women, all I'm going to preach. But there are ministries out there that people are dying for. Yes. Our young girls need somebody to train them. Yes. How to do what it is that they need to do. Don't be afraid to tell somebody's child they're wrong. I'm going to get beat up one day. And when y'all hear it, I'm going to take a beating for telling somebody the right thing. Because I'm going to tell these children when they're wrong. And I'm going to tell you, if you're wrong, I'm going to tell you too. Amen. And that's the way God wants us to be. We need to stop sugarcoating this thing. Right. We need to stop making our friends feel good. And tell them the word of God. God said the word. We're going to come for our prayer now. And let me tell you something. Be serious when you come. Yes. We come in these prayer lines and... It's a form of fashion. We come and we ask for prayer and we go back the same way. But you know God is getting tired with that. I'm here to tell you that the world is in a shape now that God is soon to come. You might not believe it, but he's on his way every day. And he's not coming back. Somebody said he's coming back looking, but if you think he's going to look for you, you're wrong. He's coming back for a church without a spot or a ring. I don't want a spot that I don't want a wrinkle to hinder me from going to the Lord. So if you're serious today, women, if you're serious, if you know your walk is not what it should be with the Lord, you need to come. There's many women in here that knows how to pray and know how to get a word through to the Lord. But I want you to come today. And when you come, you commit yourself to doing the will and the way of the Lord. Some of us have been running for too long. We are headed for damnation. But I'm here to tell you, God can save you right now. But only you can know whether you save.
relationship or not. It's not my job to judge you. God didn't tell me to judge you. But he said just to tell you that it's time out for playing now. He wants real people. The army said he's looking for a few good, real, few real men. God looking for real soldiers. He's